Okay, welcome to the January 27th, 2014 Budget Committee meeting uh, in the Town Hall Auditorium, 7 p.m. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, okay, so do we have minutes from the last meeting? Do you yes. have them up there? Extra copies? Yeah, mine if you want. Because we usually have a whole bunch. We've sent out quite a few times, so I figured yeah, we Yeah, but I'm not printing 14 pages, so they usually have them for us mm -hmm. up here. Um, I have phone in the chamber. I have gotten it so many times, I figured if anybody needed it, they would check it. Okay, so um, we're meeting um, tonight. Hopefully we can polish off the uh, minutes and then remind me at the end if we can then cancel our February 8th meeting because the purpose of that was to do all these minutes. Oh, yeah, we have to make um, a motion for yeah. minutes. But let's first um, deal with the reason we're having a meeting tonight. It's the school board warrant article number one and the 10% rule. And let me give uh, the background because um, we had uh, some communication and stuff I shared via email, and so we needed to have a meeting to uh, go through that. Uh, you may recall a week ago Wednesday, or last Wednesday, we as a budget committee voted to not recommend Article 1 on a 5 to 6 vote. Um, so what that did is it can, kicked in something called the 10% rule. Uh, and I'll read from our, this is last year's budget um, law book. Um, and I'll just paraphrase here. It says the total amount appropriated by the meeting, and they mean the town town meeting the voters, including amounts appropriated in separate and special warrant articles cannot exceed the total recommended by the budget committee by more than 10%. So if you tally up the amounts that we actually voted, recommended, it's 18 million something. Well, the bond obviously is 45 million, so we're way ahead, above the 10%. Um, so the next day, Thursday, uh, I received a document which I forwarded to the budget committee Thursday evening after I got it from Dr. Hayes. Uh, the steps that the, the school board was going to take to uh, vote to include a statement in the warrant article as a result of our vote Wednesday night. And I'll go through um, why they did that and some, some things that happened. So, I sent that to you all as a budget committee. Um, actually, I sent it really just as a piece of information um, because we do not really have a role in language in warrant articles. We vote on financial parts, and then we vote to recommend or not recommend a particular warrant article, but we don't have a role uh, in the actual language of a warrant article. So I really was forwarding that uh, at the request of Dr. Hayes to you all as information. Uh, Thursday evening after I sent that out, I got several emails from budget committee members uh, concerned about uh, that document that Dr. Hayes sent to us. And I, I will again paraphrase uh, the sentence that the school board eventually I think voted for Friday afternoon, I believe, is, and I'll, I'll read the sentence, that it, was, that it will be included at the beginning of the Warren article, Article 1. Passage of this article shall override the 10% limitation imposed on this appropriation due to the non-recommendation of the Budget Committee. And he's got some other background information as to why that sentence was going to be included in the beginning of Warren Article 1, and then subsequently I think the school board did vote for that, but we'll get to that in a second. So I received several emails from Budget Committee members concerned about that document, expressing uh, interest in uh, attorney opinion and uh, budget committee meeting. So on Friday, I followed up with that and made several phone calls. Um, I first talked to uh, Jeannie, I don't know if it's Sames or Sams, S-A-A-M-S, Jeannie. She is the new market representative at the Department of Revenue and Administration mm -hmm. and I spoke with her Friday morning and described the situation and she was actually very familiar with it because she is the one who recommended this language to the school district um, on Thursday, I believe, when the school district corresponded with DRA. 
She also referenced, uh, and I provide this to you in, I provide all this information to the Budget Committee, you all, uh, Friday night after I collated it all. But I just want to go through it for the public record. She referenced uh, on their website, the DRA website, they have sample warrant articles. And she referenced page 13, which describes uh, a sample warrant article related to long-term borrowing not recommended by Budget Committee. And under that, it states a specific example, and it says, includes that sentence. Passage of this article shall override the 10% limitation imposed on this appropriation due to the non-recommendation of the Budget Committee. Uh, and I provide that link to you, uh, and I can, we can get the hard copy if you like. Uh, I then spoke to, oh, I just want to um, say something else that she mentioned. The reason she said that she recommended this, and it's, it's essentially sort of fiscally required by a community, whether it's the town, this could happen on the town side or the school side, because if it's not included uh, and the, let's say the bond passes and all the other things pass, the DRA takes the warrants in order, in chronological order, so they would start with Warrant Article 1, which is a $45 million bond. The Budget Committee only approved $18 million plus. So everything after that, including part of the Warrant Article approving the bond, is thrown into disarray because the DRA cannot arbitrarily decide you all meant Article 2 and not Article 1 or what have you. So it essentially uh, was established by the legislature as RSA 32 18-A to help with that situation, uh, and also one of their, I think, at least one of the reasons why I think the legislature established this statute. So I then talked to um, attorney Paul Sanderson at the New Hampshire Municipal Association, uh, and I sent you his uh, email response to my query, which was essentially, is this um, uh, allowed by statute for the school board to insert this in the Warren article? Uh, he concurred, and he essentially referenced, uh, again, Statute 3218-A, and you have it in the email from him. Uh, I then spoke to a, a town administrator, Steve Fournier, um, and relayed the <coughs> conversations I had with uh, DRA and the Hampshire Municipal <coughs> Association, and said that I also thought perhaps we should have uh, a response from the town attorney. So I forwarded him the document that Dr. Hayes had sent us and the email from Paul Sanderson and the New Hampshire Municipal Association and told him about my conversation with DRA. And I will read, uh, we all got an email from Administrator Fournier and I will read that um, first paragraph in reference to this particular document. All. I have seen the number of interactions on the topic of the 10% rule and the bond and was asked to have the town attorney review it. I have reviewed the concerns and also the opinions of the Department of Revenue Administration and the New Hampshire Municipal Association Legal Counsel. I have looked at the law myself, RSA 3218-A, which is attached, and consulted with the town attorney. In 2000, the legislature enacted RSA 3218-A that specifically states that the governing body shall place this wording in the article. The attorney and I concur that this wording is appropriate and necessary. In addition, it is a reminder that it is up to the governing body to determine the wording of warrant articles, not the budget committee. The budget committee may only recommend or not recommend the passage of an article. And I believe you all have a copy of uh, RSA 3218A, which I will not read in its entirety, but we'll have it, it'll be in the budget committee's uh, documents. Uh, later on Friday, I also uh, received, uh, I think, a slight update on the document that Dr. Hayes had provided the day before, and I forwarded that to you, uh, along with all the other information that I had compiled in regards to this uh, issue. So, um, and it seemed like there was also a request to have a meeting. I think it was appropriate to have this meeting to relay in public um, what was uh, found about the 10% rule. So I will, if anybody else has any comments, questions, um, you can open it up for that. Dana. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, 
I'm still not, I understand the, the legality of all of this. <coughs> um, just two points I want to make. One is, I feel this was all prearranged, and once the uh, budget committee voted the way it did, there was wheels in motion. If we had had, which I thought would have been appropriate, if Dr. Hayes had shared his thoughts of what the next process would be, we probably wouldn't be sitting here. Um, second to that is, I'm not clear what it is that they're trying to do. Are they trying to save the bond? Are they trying to add more money somewhere? I mean, when I see this $18 million figure over and beyond the $16 million, I I'm not sure where they're going. Does it mean that if you vote yes on that Article 1, then it, everything passes? Or just the bond passes? Uh, the sentence is at the beginning of Warren Article 1, yeah. so it applies to Warren Article 1. It's essentially a required statement that either the town or the school board has to insert in a bond, only a bond Warren Article, because it's so big. If it was not included, but, uh, and it was passed, yeah. no, and I it passed, that. Yeah. no, you know, because you, what you asked no, was... No, I want to know about the money part. There right. is no change in the money, it's a 40 million, there's no change in the financial aspect of any Warren Article, one sentence is being added to the beginning of Warren Article 1. Because if it's not added, and that passes, then no one knows what the voters approved, assuming they vote for everything else, or at least the operating budget. Because we, as a budget committee, only approved a total of, can give you the exact number? 46 something. No, so. no, no, no. We only approved $18,972,099 which is the operating budget, was the 500,000 in fire and life safety and 50,000 each in two bonds. So it's this one. It's 17, 17 that's all we plus the 10%, which comes to 18. Right. <coughs> we approved 17 million, so I'll take that. We approved $17,247,363. 10% of that is another $1,724,736. So the most, without that sentence in there, in Warren Article 1, the most that the voters could approve is $18,972,099. But the That's Warren Articles... That's collectively data for all the Warren Articles. For all the Warren Articles. That's question. For all the Warren Articles. For all the Warren Articles. That's what the budget law says. Okay, so if all of the Warren Articles are passed, not including Article 1, because there's no dollar change there, is that correct? This doesn't really, matter. There's no this really only applies to the other ones. But it, it only applies to, to the bond warrant article. Well, that's the part of the blue. Uh, oh, the easy part to understand is this language has to be put in there by the state, and it's basically leaving it to the voters to say the current war article that you're voting on is 10 percent more than all other war articles. That you're voting more, more, more. More. That's it. 10 yeah. more. That's it. Yeah. You're, it's, you're voting for 10. You're, you're basically authorizing the town to say if we vote yes for this, we're allowing 10 percent more over. Well, it's a lot more. 10 percent. Yeah. But, but we're, we're allowing, allowing, we're allowing, allowing the override. You're, 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 you're basically allowing the town voters to override what state says by putting that in there. If they don't put it in there and it passes, but it's a whole other plan. But that's that 10 percent only apply to the 500,000? No, no. no, the 10 percent is you're allowing town voters to vote for a warrant article that is 10, over 10 percent more than what all other warrant articles are. Leave money completely out of it. It could be $1 to $100. It's actually 10 percent more. So you're allowing the voters to vote and say yes or no, we're going to say this warrant article is more than 10 percent. And if it passes, the town is saying that it's going to allow the school to bond $45 million, which is 10% more than what are, more than 10%. Then if it fails, then it's no point. Uh, Amy and then Cliff. One of the things I'm trying to explain this is that my understanding is that this could apply, whether it was, a, obviously it's a bond warrant article that puts it over, but my understanding with the, the budget law is that any aggregate total that puts it over the 10% that is approved by the budget committee, regardless of if it's for lions and tigers and bears, we have to be aware that this 10% rule is there is what I'll call a tax cap. 
and regardless of you know the makeup or whatever, um, let's say just to, to keep keep the numbers easy, regardless of which articles or what they're for, if the total amount in this case put forth to the budget committee is seventeen thousand, and the budget committee comes in and uh, recommends only fifteen thousand, they can only go to sixteen five. I'm just breaking it down to real so it can only go to 16.5. So there's a couple of things to my understanding that can happen there. One is certainly, in this case, the school board could say, no, we don't want this one. You know, whatever that 500,000, they could drop it down to within the 10% rule. I don't see that that was going to, to happen or the town could, but they've only got 16.5 regardless of how it's made up. And when you go to DRA, Again, as Ellen said, they take number by number, and this bond article is number one. If, to your point about if, if the bond article, if any of the bond articles don't pass that bring it under the 10%, yes, it's a moot point. It's still going to be up to the voters. But if they do all pass, and that aggregate is there without that language in there, legally speaking, it, it is. I think Blue put it more nicely than I probably put it in my own head, but. It turns into a giant three-ring circus. Um, you have to ha you have to fix it all. You have to have a special town meeting. You have to repost everything. You just it isn't that any of these things go away. It's just it's 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 that legally it turns it into a quagmire. Um, and in the end, I you know it's prudent legal speak. It is no reflection on anybody knowing how it, how the votes are going to go, what the total is, whatever. But the the legal danger is is that if all the warrant articles pass and we're over that limit, it opens it up to a huge amount of, of challenges and legal wrangling that I don't think anybody wants. And that to my understanding is why that why that rule is in place. Simple. Yes people Yes, people need to know that it's over the 10%, let's call it a tax cap, it's there for a reason. But regardless of which article puts it over, it's a legal nightmare that I don't think anybody wants to see happen. Um, so in that respect, I'm, I'm just speaking legal, legal wise, whatever completely, whatever's on the table, um, specifically off of it, legal wise, I believe it has to be, it has to be in there and is done for a prudent reason. Oh, Did I kind of hit that clip? <laughs> clip? Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks. A uh, couple things. So, the characterizing it as a tax cap, it's it's kind of an argument, but I'm not sure. Well, I'm it's trying to put it in some sort of vernacular right. that mm -hmm. that people will will understand. There is a maximum that we can go over. Right. Regardless of. Um, and I, I want to thank you, Ellen, for calling this meeting. There's a lot of value in getting into discussing this to make sure that the voters are well informed, and for everyone who's got questions, clarifying questions that um, they want to ask um, to make sure they understand and to help the, the understanding of all. So I do very, very deeply, very deeply resent framing the school board or the school administration, Dr. Hayes in particular, as having some sort of a devious scheme to pull something over in the budget committee or the voters, how dare you? Well, how dare that he do way, the way he did it. I mean, it just seemed to all of us. Dana, wait a second. I have to interrupt you because yeah. you are making a very inaccurate statement. No, I I'm talking from the people that I speak with and hear and call me and say, what the hell just happened? I'm like, I don't really know. But it seems like it was a fast You one. need, as a budget committee member, to read your budget law book yeah. and understand that we, as a budget committee, voted Wednesday night. Yes. And no one knew what the outcome of that vote would be. It happened that it was a five to six not recommended. I agree. Dr. Hayes, on Thursday, he can, I don't know how much time he spent, but he spent Thursday trying to understand the implications of that vote. And he developed, by the end of the day, in consultation with attorneys, that fact sheet that he sent to us to inform us as a budget committee member before, I believe, it was sent out to the public. He did not prearrange or predetermine, and I also take offense to that comment. That's fine. It's inaccurate. That's fine. You can and I think take it's a offense. disservice to the public because this is actually a very simple process. 
I had hoped by talking to three different officials that people would understand this is one sentence that the legislature provides to the community to avoid a mess and to avoid a budget committee of, say, six people deciding on a $45 million Warren article or some other amount without the public having an ability to vote on that Warren article. This allows the voters to have a say. If it's not in there, it kills the Warren by six people on a budget committee. I'm not taking offense to anybody's vote. Eleven. We're all perfectly, we had 11 people. And I think you misunderstand my point. I understand why that is there and why they have to put it in. I'm questioning, in my mind, it was done so quickly. It had to be. The warrant has to be posted by Monday, today. which is today. They had to figure out what to do and understand that they could put this sentence in, given attorney's opinion. The school board had to post a meeting, had to vote on Friday to put that sentence in, and the warrant had to be posted by today. There was no other time. Uh, Russ and then Blue. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Just by way of explanation, I had to work through this because I was surprised um, on the application. And I always thought the 10% rule was individual based on a Warren article, that that particular Warren article couldn't be changed in the deliberative session by more than 10%. This was a great learning experience to find out they look at it as a basket of Warren articles from the town or the school. So the, the first part was <coughs> if you took the basket from the school, as Ellen said, it would have been 45 million plus 18 million round, uh, 17 million, two round numbers, would have ended up with 60 some odd million in total dollars. So, but then you have to split that basket between what the budget committee approved and recommended, which was only about 17 million two, and when they ended up voting not to recommend the bond article that took that 45 million out of the 10% rule. The 10% rule only applies to what's, a, what's recommended by the budget committee. So as soon as we ended up saying we don't recommend the bond, then the total amount of warrants left, as Ellen explained, was 17 million two. For that whole basket of all the school warrant articles, they would, the deliberative session would only be allowed to increase it by 1.7 million to 18 right. million, mm -hmm. which would have then just blown away any vote that could have been on the bond article at 45 million. So by putting, we did what we did, it created an action that said the bond issue was now off the table until people read the law and said, well, we can go to the public and put this comment in that says, by approving this, you're approving not only the bond article, but approving the fact that you can exceed the 10% rule. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the process I went through. So I, it, it's, it was a learning <coughs> experience, I think, for all of us. And my compliments for acting so quickly to go to all the different places to verify that and to take away anybody's concerns that this wasn't very proper. I don't know people who've been in town longer if this has happened before, so I think it's a, it's I've never, yeah, <coughs> it's a learning experience. I think the school just almost happened once is more on the you know, rightly going to have to do some work to help educate people at the delivery session <coughs> about what it is. But it's actually a pretty, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty clear. Oh, sorry. Uh, Being new to the budget committee, we were given this book in the beginning of the year. And I thumbed through it, read quite a bit of it. Um, I give, must admit, um, going through the budget process this year, uh, completely forgot about the 10 rule until it was brought up. Um, so the onus really is, uh, for the public to know, is on me. I should have been paying attention and should have brought it up. I think every single budget committee member should have been paying attention and brought it up. Um, we should have been adding the numbers and looking at the budget and going, hey, guys, you're going to exceed the time rule. Whose fault is that? Um, to kind of go back to a little bit between Cliff and Dana, Dana, I guess my question to you is, how does this help them? Oh, oh. The school board. This now muddies their article even more. It makes it more interestingly confusing for people to understand. So. That's where I kind of go, placing the blame on people really doesn't help. 
it happened. No, I, I don't think the school board went into our meeting of Warren Article 1, the bond issue, thinking it was going to get voted down. I honestly don't think they thought it was going to get voted down. I and when it got voted down, right. they were like, oh no, now there's a 10% rule. What do we have to do? We have to scramble for time, and we have two and a half days, basically. So I, I read the 10% uh, rule. Oh, I have, I have been familiar with times. it, but I couldn't comprehend how it related to a bond because we never had it on the council side. I agree 100%. Bond. Now I know that the 10% rule only relates to a bond. It doesn't relate to anything else. No, it is the total. It is the total, yes. It is the total. It it is is the total. It's but total. it's a major bond issue. My frustration they was to see an email saying that all of this is being done, it appeared, and... But again... Just, wait a minute, let me finish. It appeared that something was going on behind the scenes, and I kept on asking myself, why wasn't this, if it's in the book, why wasn't this brought up at the, the last budget meeting we had? And as I said to you before we started, if we had, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight. There was nothing going on behind the scenes. No, no, you know, no. I don't, hold on, let no, me no, finish, no, though. No, I, no, I was actually the first that's person not what I'm speaking. saying. I'm you saying, just did say that. No, I'm saying behind the scenes, meaning that if we were knowledge of this, and that perhaps Dr. Hayes might have addressed it to us that night and said, by the way, because this was defeated, this is now what's going to happen. So 12 and a half hours would have made a difference? We voted, we, Wednesday, we, we voted Wednesday, we voted Wednesday, it turned out Thursday, we got the decision. We all said it was in the book. You're, you're absolutely correct, but... That was my point. You, your vote wouldn't have changed, number one, and it couldn't, because no. we had already voted on it. And right. number two, we have no decision process I in know the that. language of board articles. I know. So you're arguing right. this point is really a moot point. It's not a budget committee. It's not a budget I committee. The only time we have any say is in when the dollar amount changes. The wording of the warrant out of the way and they'll say it. And I knew that. But I was trying to articulate, like Russ was saying, how does that affect the bond? Does What's it? that 10%? Because I thought, in my original thinking, was everything on there, including the budget, would be increased by another 10%. And I kept on saying to myself, no. we didn't touch the budget. And that's where I say the it. language of them, <coughs> the, the school board having to put it in, actually muddies the warrant article no, to the point where it could be misconstrued as now everything is going up by 10%. And that's what I'm saying. It doesn't help them. This is not a good thing for that warrant article. Right. Well, they and it got voted down by us. Right. OK, Judy, and then uh, Dave, and then we're going to wrap okay. up. Just so, just so we're clear, and the public is clear, in, in this language, it is saying that the governing body, which I assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the school board, has the responsibility to make to see this and make those changes to comply with state law. But it is the legislative body, which is the voters, mm -hmm. who will make the final decision. Mm -hmm. right. And so that's that one of the reasons why it's included, <coughs> to give yeah. the voters the opportunity. Right. So that, you know, it's not a done deal, as we say. I mean, it still goes to, to the deliberative session, and it still goes to March 11th for the, for, for the final vote. It is very confusing. It, is, it was something that was, a lot of people don't understand, but it's our responsibility to see that they do understand it, and that could this happen, my question, could this happen with the, with the town bond issue? Sure. Mm -hmm. So we go from there. Yeah, yeah it doesn't change, just so everybody's clear, it doesn't change any of the war articles on the town side or the community, but on the school side. It's just adding a sentence which allows the voters to vote on the bond. That's all it does. Okay. Oh, sorry, Dave. Well, I think that was the real, I mean, as soon as I got the email, I went and researched it and looked it up. I mean, the real reason it was put into effect in 2000 is so when towns or schools had major expenditures that a small group of people couldn't decide that it actually went to the public. So the public could vote on it. That's really the purpose of it. It's so that the legislature, as you say, the, the townspeople can vote on it <coughs> one way or the other. And, and as you said, it's up to the, the, the townspeople to vote on it. But if we didn't put that language in, um, that would make a lot of problems that would, would just essentially, would be yeah, it yeah. Would just, so it had to be done. And I, I think even just the vote on this committee showed that it was so even that 
it's something where it, it needs to get out to the public for the public to have their say, and that's how I look at it. Can, um, one final question. Can they, at the deliberative session, they can't change the language, right? Mm, no. Deliberative session, the Warren Article languages can be changed as at any deliberative session. Warren Articles can be changed. There are elements that need to stay, yeah. and they can't be changed, but there are things Purpose can't be changed. Oh, what about right. what you just put in? That can't be changed. No, no. no. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. They can't change that. Right. That's one I can get the last. Okay, very good. Thank you for that discussion. Um, moving on. I yeah. want to oh, sure. Um, before we get into approval of minutes, yeah. um, the way some of this is, I, you did a terrific job starting out the meeting and calling out. Chronicle? Chronological. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold Easy and for you to say. Yeah. 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 Um, the, uh, the, 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 trans the things that transpired on Thursday, Friday, thank you for that. One piece, though, that we haven't um, done to remedy yet is, in my opinion, um, and in the opinion of Steve Fournier, I think at least, is that in some of his correspondence, is that the um, budget committee stumbled into um, having what's known as a legal meeting. Um, under RSA 91A, there's language that says you cannot have a, well, you have to post your meeting at least 24 hours ahead, and you, it can't be non-extemporaneous, uh, where everyone needs to be able to be in the same room and the public aware of it, and where there were comments made beyond I can make that date or not make that date, where th those things that have been clearly allowed, there's been some commentary that I think we leave ourselves exposed if we don't, if, at minimum, include a um, copy of those emails in the record of this meeting. I think that's the, uh, at least a good step in uh, remedying the, uh, the secret or illegal meeting. Yeah, he's referencing, and I, and I know you've got the email for me, when I send out an email just listing, giving you documents, I'm not making any commentary, did you notice? Um, it's very easy to reply to all. It's just a natural email thing. Um, sometimes it's done on purpose, sometimes it's done accidentally. Um, in this situation, um, I don't know if it was purposeful or accidental, but there were several emails that were sent by various people that went to the entire group. And I have said before, and I said it again during that uh, last week, that you cannot reply to all, as Cliff was saying. We cannot have a discussion via email with a quorum. And it was, since it was to the whole entire budget committee, it was, it was a problem. Uh, we can include those, those particular emails. I, I tend to include everything. That's why I copy Kathy uh, and Ellen on all emails. And so that goes to Kathy, puts it in the record of all the materials that I sent to you on Friday went in. Um, I did not include those particular emails, but. I have no problem with being submitted. There's a consensus, no we can include those as well. Yeah. Um, I do want to say one thing. In regards to that, there was also from Steve Fournier, his opinion, the lawyer's opinion, and all that. That, to me, is information that could have waited till tonight. So when you throw something like that out, that's what precipitates the, the button to be hit to all as a response. It's not right, but I think to that degree, some of that happens. That was, uh, well, Larry. Well, and I thought you made it quite clear and have all year how you wanted us to respond uh, to you. I mean, you put it in just about every every uh, note to us, uh, respond to you only. Thank you. It's, it, and, I mean, for the record, that's that's for all committees. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I experienced the same thing on the Conservation Commission, oh, yeah. and we sometimes mm -hmm. have the same issues. Yeah, it's, it's you know, <laughs> to be fair, I'm sure we've all, it, it, it's hard not to yeah, reply to all sometimes. Uh, in reference to Administrator Fournier's email, he, he was requested by us, me as your uh, agent, if you will, to get an attorney's opinion. He did that, and he was providing that back to the entire budget committee, as he does with all information he shares with us. So I think that was an appropriate um, document, basically, that he was sending to us. So with that, um, it sounds like we had consensus about including the just the emails that were sent to all uh, that communication. Could I just ask a question? Do yes. you want the one to be also? 
Um, oh, yes. I'll, I'll uh, email you or I'll email you okay. and Kathy I and everybody. Because yeah. that will go in your packet as well. Everything else. Um, okay. Very good. Are we set to move on? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> January 13th, which was our public hearing. Dave uh, Fultz was not here. I will make a motion. Make a motion. We make a motion. Amy <laughs> made a motion to approve. A second? Second. Uh, Michael, second. Okay, any changes? I have one, and I'm not sure, <coughs> um, page four under public hearing. It says, Sheriff Snyder said it is the responsibility of the budget committee to put forth the operating budget and one articles, I think, and make recommendations on one article. Do you see where I am there, Alan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you yeah, I had uh, two on page, at least my page three. I never know if it's the one I got here or the one I printed out at home. Uh, in the first middle of the first paragraph, it looks like it's $200. Could and you I think start the paragraph? That you for the oh, it's the top paragraph. Oh, I see it's 200, it says 200, what, zero, zero, it should be 200,000. Um, yeah. yeah. The, Two pages further on page five, the last paragraph on the bottom, where it's talking about the impact of the um, new building on the taxes. I think it says remaining 23 years, and I believe it's 24 years because it's a 25-year bond, and they were only talking about the first year being a dollar 75 impact, and then what it would be for the next. Till the end of the bond, which would be 24 years, not 23 years. That would make sense. We just need to review the tape, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just check that. Because there was some talk about money being used from elsewhere to offset. Yeah, you might just check to see what they said, because it has to be whatever they said. Yeah, right. but even, even if they used that money, it wouldn't change the bond term of 25 years. So I'm just saying it may have been no, said 23 by no. whoever said it, but the accurate number. Yeah, but if they said 23, you have to leave it 23. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, uh, motion to approve as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Dave Fultz abstained. Here. January 15th, motion to approve the minutes of January 15th, 2014. I will make a motion to approve meeting minutes of January 15th. Second? I'll second that. Approve. Okay, discussion, changes. I gotta give you props for capturing all that stuff. Yeah, that was a. That was it gets to the point where I can only go do yeah. what I said and then I said. That's all I knew. <laughs> <laughs> this is Snyder, I checked. Um, shoot, okay. Well, anybody's got anything. I have, I have one teensy weensy little thing, which is on my page six. I know I didn't print what I was going to do. Um, so the, the next, it starts, the next warrant article would be for the creation of a 300th anniversary celebration. So you see that paragraph? It's on my six, but I don't know what it looks on. Yeah. Is it on six? Yeah, I see okay. you're saying that 2000 is on. Um, the motion, it says the motion passed unanimous, uh, unanimously 110. 110 to zero. <laughs> Heaven help us. <laughs> That is a well attended budget committee meeting. Yeah. Not only that, it's unmanageable. Let me see. Could you imagine getting anything done with 110? Nothing wrong with 110. It's minor stuff, Ellen, with all you do, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Totally um, amazing. I did not have anything else. Russ? Yeah, let me do the, what I think may be the easier ones uh, first. On my page four, but the discussion, uh, the paragraph started on page three. Um, the paragraph started discussion. Ms. Thompson said, you can see me section. Mm -hmm. And it's at the um, end of that paragraph where it said, given about 70,000 
tax forgiveness. Uh, I don't know if that's what was said, but I'm just clarifying it was that 70000 per year, I thought, was what the, I don't know. Yeah, that was, mm, so the, that was the, the tax was, that was yes. not paid was seven, would have been $70,000 per, per year. Per year, yes, the same as every So, tax again, tax. I don't know if it's a question of accuracy or what was No, it's whatever said. It's, it's whatever said. Um, and so I just asked you to check that one. Trying to see if, um, <clears throat> on page seven where it says discussion, Mr. Simon, mm -hmm. um, which time? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good point. Um, it's in, in that paragraph that said the one article. <coughs> Seventh line down, where it, uh, the number one two seven two shows mm -hmm. um, between through and was. I think the word tax should be there. Okay, lost us. Oh, through taxation or through tax? Yeah, through, through tax, tax was. Okay. Yeah, do you have that, Ellen? Just catch that. I'm not sure what page you're on. Um, roughly page seven. Come on, it's a big page. paragraph with lots of numbers. Discussion, Mr. Come Simon said the one article. And the kind of like a third of the way down, it says 1272 one, mil. M. Also, should be a 1.272 while you're in there. Page Please. seven. Not one comma. It's abbreviated. Oh, wait a minute. It's okay. And it's not even true. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And the only other thing that was confusing to me, and I did like to unconfuse it, was when we were discussing about the law. Uh, it, it was confusing to me for a while through the discussion that it, 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 it seems in the minutes to say the law was you should allow remote access. Where what the law ended up saying was that it's at the option of any committee to decide what they want to do based on. Where are, uh, where are you at the end of the back? There's okay. sort of two or three places. Um, at the bottom of my page one, where it says town administrator Fournier, when you read the law, which stated that a committee could right. allow. That's right. That's right. You possibly, but right. we're what not said. required to. Right. Okay. Um, and there's several places that just chunk them all and say, really, on the second um, bottom, towards the end of that same paragraph. Um, About four lines up from the bottom of the paragraph, it said Mr. Pickering, the first time Mr. Pickering was mentioned. Before that is a word said. It says regardless of what the law said, I would say said should say allowed as options. And with that, I just say that brings the option issue. It's a little more clear. Uh, she'll have to take because if this is what was said, this is yeah, what was said. Yeah, I understand, I understand your issue, but. All good? Okay, motion. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as amended say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? Nobody abstained? Okay, all in favor. Very good. Okay, that's our last um, January 22nd. Okay, motion to approve, uh, that's right. Motion to approve January 22nd, 2014 meeting minutes. Uh, Russ, motion second. Motion to approve. Aye. Uh, Dana, second. Any changes? I have nothing. The one thing I did do, and I don't know if Drew wants to do the same, uh, when I 
read an encapsulation of my statement. I spoke with him beforehand. Um, I just gave her what I had typed up that I read from that meeting to just insert oh, yeah. there. Sure. Uh, instead of the he said, he said stuff. And so, so you can, if you're yeah. fine with that. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. yeah. Often in the, um, yeah, you can say that at the meeting itself, you say I'm submitting this as part of the record. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. All in favor of approving as written? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, we need to, uh, if everybody's willing, to vote to cancel our February 8th meeting, which is going to be at 9.30 before the deliberative session. The purpose of that was to approve these three minutes that we just did. So if we can have a motion to cancel. Before we do that, yes, we still have this meeting's right. minutes that we need to approve. <laughs> but you know, I, as I recall last year, we did that, actually the next budget committee did it. Okay. It never ends. If everybody's okay with that, yeah, yeah it was yeah. so, so it should be a quorum of we have a this group yeah. at that, that, that meeting. Yeah. Those would be the qualified voters. Right. <laughs> I can be with coffee and donuts. Yeah. So with so that, I move to adjourn. Okay. No. Oh, Wait, no, no, no. Okay. One more thing. Sure. I, I will make a motion that we uh, do not hold oh, sorry. a meeting on February eighth at nine thirty. Second. Second. Dave seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. Cliff. Dana second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Do get there.